So here's my four liter block on the way to the engine shop. Knocked all the freeze plugs out. I'm just gonna spray this thing out, get it nice and clean before I drop it off so in the hot tank it's even cleaner. Same goes for the head. Just got my new Edelbrock 50159 head. 50169 comes with the valve train. 50159 comes without. This is going on to my 2000 Cherokee, which uses coil packs. This is machined with bolt holes for the coil packs. It's also got a little cutout for a larger distributor there if you're running one of those. So I already have a set of performance Mopar springs and retainers. Zach over at 505 hooked me up with these larger valves. Just need to get a little machine work done for them. Make it breathe a little easier. He also got me the locks and the seals. And off to the machine shop. So I got the block back from the machine shop. This is out of a 2000 Cherokee. We bored it approximately 40 over just to exactly match the 40 over key plug pistons. Threw in some new cam bearings and hot tanked it. Next thing I'm going to do is prep it for paint. And I want to paint it on the engine stand. But before I put the engine stand plate on the back, I want to put the cam shaft plug on the back, the rear freeze plug, and get rid of this oil galley plug, swap it out with a new one, and seal it. The square drive on the oil galley plug isn't just a normal 3 8 drive, it's a little bit smaller than that. The new ones are hex, they make it easy. But getting these old ones out is pretty hard. You need to, the best way to do it is take a head bolt, they're so strong, and take it to the grinder, grind it down until you've got a nice little square. These bolts don't shear off as easily as a grade A, they're really strong. Get it to where it fits in there pretty well, and uh, set it in. Use one of these little impact guys and just nail it just to break it loose and then you can run it out pretty easily. Now I want to prep these threads, get them all cleaned up. This is a 3 8 18 pipe thread tap. Get it started in there. Shoot a little brake cleaner in there. Run it in. Good to go. This is what I'm going to use on the threads for the oil galley plug. So, 5 16 hex. Set to 30 foot pounds. Now I've got to sand and prep the surface for the freeze plug and the cam plug. 120 grit, little sanding wheel, nice and slow. Permatex Indian head works pretty well for freeze plugs and cam plugs. Also Loctite 37542 is meant for that as well. Just get it on both surfaces. Just want to barely get the inner edge here. Now that it's nice and tacky on both surfaces, just going to kind of slip it into place, pound it in. I'm using the socket that's slightly larger than the hole so that it'll stop it flush. Okay, got her up on the stand, just a little bit more paint prep, get all the crusties off of there, spray her down, get her ready. 
They got her all scuffed up and prepped outside for some paint now. Three coats of primer, let this sucker sit overnight under the heater and paint it in the morning. Okay, so I've got her all painted up, real pretty blue. Now I'm gonna go through and get the crankshaft area ready. I'm gonna start on the bottom end. But first, clean off the oil pan gasket area. I'm gonna go through and clean the threads on every journal. And then the holes for the oil pan. So this is a half 13 thread chaser. It's not a tap. Taps make it a lot easier for you to re-thread it by mistake. It's just that thread chaser. Stick it in there. Little shot of brake cleaner. Run it down nice and easy. And right back out. And go on to the next side. That's about all there is to it. We'll do the same on all these bolts here too. These ones are all quarter 20. Some of them on this side will feed all the way through. Most of them have a pocket underneath them and you'll bottom out, so just be careful. And the four corners are 5 16 18. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean the bolts for the main bearing caps. Just hit them with the wire wheel. These caps are numbered. That's number one, that's number six, and it's critical that they go back on the journal that they came from. Just look for that when you're putting them back on. Finish cleaning up all the surfaces. Spray it all out with brake cleaner or whatever you want to use. Just get it nice and clean before you move on. Got all the brace plug holes reamed out, ready to go. Head gasket mating area is all nice and cleaned up, polished. I just need to soak it down with some brake cleaner, get all the little bits and pieces out of there before I move on. Next, I'm going to set the main bearings in, drop the crank in, plastic gauge it. When you pull out the stack of bearings to set there in the top half, grab the ones that have the oil holes in them, set those suckers in. There's a thrust bearing with these ears on it. It's going to go on the third journal back and you'll see that there's a little tapered edge on it. Set it with the oil hole on the right side. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Line up the little tang with the slot with the tang on it. Set those suckers in place. Don't use any oil yet. because The oil will dissolve the plastic gauge, giving an inaccurate reading. Now I'm going to drop the crankshaft in. The brand new 4.2 or 258 crank from SCAT. Be real gentle with it. Scratch up your bearings before you even use them. So now we're going to use plastic gauge to make sure that our bearing clearances are just right. We want anywhere between 15 thousandths and 25 thousandths. So plastic gauge is this little tiny green strip of plastic. We're going to set on top of the bearing surface. And then when we put the cap on and tighten it down, it'll squash out flat. And we'll use this to measure. Just kind of line up next to it. And you want to get right in the right range. So what you do is you snip off a little piece of this paper that's about the right width, pull out that thin little piece of plastic, and set it on the surface that you're going to use. Just don't get it on the oil hole. And before I get too far, I want to show you something that will completely ruin your day. I almost forgot about it. Get a little bit of weight in here. Lock that assembly from rotating. You dump that crankshaft out on the ground, you're going to be pretty pissed. So I've been working down the line, snapping these caps in. Set them on there nice and nice and easy. Tang to tang. Always. These are numbered, remember. Get them all lined up. Then for the bolts, you want to use this ARP fastener lube. Splat it on there. Supposedly you can use this up to five different times tightening it and get the same reading. It's better than oil or grease or whatever. Splat that stuff on there. Run them down in there. I've got a hammer in here to keep the crank from rotating. It'll ruin these plastic gauges if the crank rotates. It'll spread them. Also keep any oil off of those suckers. It'll dissolve them. Okay, so all the caps are on and in place. We're going to torque all these suckers down to 80 in three steps. 
I'm going to start off at 30, get both sides, then we'll move to this one, then this one. You just want to work your way from the inside out. Then we'll go to 60, and then up to 80. Here's 30. 60. 80. And we're tightening all the other ones in between those steps. So we've got all the caps pulled back off. Going to use the plastic gauge. That's 15 thousandths, that's 20 thousandths, that's 30 thousandths. So we want to be anywhere in this range. Hold it up against this one. And looks like it's a little bit smaller size than that 15 thousandths, but bigger than the 20 thousandths. So probably about 18 thousandths of an inch there. That's right where we need to be. Just check all of them. Make sure you're on the same page and you're good to go. So in this next step, you want to get your AAA card out. And then scrape away. All the old material and it'll dissolve in oil but why not you get it all nice and clean and if you screw something up this circle will get you most of the way home from Moab now let's pull out the crank put it back on the shelf and throw some assembly lube on those bearings I use this Permatex ultra slick it's pretty good stuff Next, before we put the lube in, before we put the crank in, I'm going to throw the rear main seal in. This is the number for the one that does not have the ears on it. These are those little ears I was talking about. Some blocks have it cut out right here for that. And this is that part number. So when you open up the package, you'll find this little shoehorn guy in there. That just helps you feed this rear main seal in. In case you're trying to install this with the crankshaft in there and it's already in your vehicle. Put a little crease in it. You sit it in there like that and then you just kind of feed the seal in and then peel that out. If you look at the seal, it's got a little lip to it. This side is the larger side. It's got little kind of teeth on there. That faces the front of the motor. We're going to put some Permatex Ultra Black on there and then slip it down in the groove. And don't get that glue anywhere but on the back side of that. So we've got that rear main in place. I'm going to put the Permatex Ultra Slick on every bearing. Don't use sparingly. Make sure to lube them all up. Get a good healthy coating on each one of them. Smear it around. And tang to tang. I've got the number seven cap, the last one, ready to go. Got the rear man glued in there. I'm going to put a little bit of glue up here and here. I want to make sure that I get some brake cleaner on the surface down below. Get it nice and cleaned up before I slap it on there. So we've got it all good to go. Slap that sucker on. So torque them all back down again. 30, 60, 80, starting at the center, working your way out.